Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Genghis Khan, Napoleon Bonaparte. These names mark the end of the era of the four great conquerors. Imagine Alexander the Great, a man who wept because conquering two million square miles was not enough for him. He was the glory hunter, a man whose only desire was to conquer the world. He fearlessly led his army into battle as if he were immortal. And why wouldn't he think so? The man was on a victory spree for 10 years. His men, however, were exhausted and yearned to return home to enjoy the luxuries they had won. But their king had no interest in riches. Things were going well for him until he hit a wall in India. Alexander lost many men in the fierce battle against Porus, his most challenging adversary. Reportedly wounded himself, and with his horse dying in battle, he continued to push his men. However, facing them across the river was another vast Indian army, refreshed and ready, while his own troops were tired and weakened. They begged Alexander to call it a day, to end the campaign and return home. And for once, the indomitable Alexander was forced to comply. This was the beginning of his end. Infamous for his drinking habit, Alexander one night went overboard and fell seriously ill. His opportunistic generals quickly gathered around their dying king, inquiring who should inherit his vast empire. Alexander's cryptic reply to the strongest triggered a war between his generals that lasted for almost 50 years. The Macedonian Empire was broken up into pieces even before it fully formed. But in truth, it was never about Macedonia for Alexander. It was always about his own glory. Paralyzed, he was pronounced dead by his physicians. Greek historians wrote that Alexander's body didn't decompose for six days, proclaiming him a god. However, they failed to realize he isn't dead. Modern-day scientists believe Alexander suffered from a neurological disorder that put him in a coma, meaning he possibly heard the plots of his generals before being buried alive. Next, we have Julius Caesar, an avid fan of Alexander. While Alexander wept for having no more worlds to conquer, Caesar is reported to have wept while reading about Alexander's exploits. Comparing himself to Alexander, he lamented his lack of accomplishments at the same age. Like his idol, he was self-obsessed and narcissistic. Once he gained significant power as a general and statesman, he undermined the Roman Republic and declared himself dictator perpetually. He wasn't shy about his ambitions, famously saying, if you must break the law, do it to seize power. In all other cases, observe it. Senators in Rome, sensing his intentions to establish a monarchy, conspired against him. On March 15, 44 BC, a group of 60 senators assassinated Caesar in a Senate meeting. He was stabbed 23 times, a testament to their collective disdain. The last thing Caesar saw was his own adopted son and trusted ally, Marcus Brutus, among the assailants. The medieval era is often remembered for the Crusaders, but they were overshadowed by the beast of the East, Genghis Khan. He conquered twice as much land as Alexander and aimed to unite the world under one rule. Unlike Alexander or Caesar, he did not delude himself into thinking he was a god or a messiah. He knew he was a tyrant and boasted about it. The greatest happiness, he said, is to scatter your enemy, to drive him before you, to see his cities reduced to ashes, to see those who love him shrouded in tears and to gather into your bosom his wives and daughters. His death is shrouded in mystery, with various accounts ranging from falling victim to the bubonic plague to being fatally wounded in battle. The secrecy surrounding his death was intentional as it occurred at a critical moment in the Mongol conquest of the Western Xia Empire. Even in death, Khan's influence was immense. His followers slaughtered everyone along his funeral procession's route to keep his death a secret. Finally, we fast forward to Napoleon Bonaparte, arguably the greatest conqueror of them all. With the transition from swords and spears to artillery, Napoleon's military genius shone. He became emperor in the name of defending revolutionary France, but his ambitions carried him far beyond. Bizarre in his ways, Napoleon saw himself as an artist of war. He once said, I love power as an artist loves his art. To him, the battlefield was a canvas, and he was the painter. His concentration and memory for details were unparalleled. During a campaign in 1805, when a subordinate couldn't locate his division, 
Napoleon, without consulting any maps or papers, provided the exact location and status of the unit. He envisioned his entire army, consisting of 200,000 men across seven corps, all in his mind. Napoleon's forces swept through Europe and the Mediterranean with the speed and ferocity of a storm. But as the stakes rose, so did the death toll and the bloodiness of battles. Finally, he met his defeat at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815 and was captured by the British. Rather than executing him, they exiled him to live in a modest bungalow. There he spent his final days in denial of his fallen status, still conducting himself as if he were ruling. He passed away on May 5, 1821, his last words expressing his love for France, the army, and his wife, Josephine. Thus ended the era of the four great conquerors. Each met a different fate. Alexander from illness, Caesar was betrayed and murdered, Genghis Khan's death a mystery, and Napoleon dying in captivity. Yet they shared a common thread, an insatiable desire for more which ultimately led to their downfalls.